Hi, my name is Maya Swan Vitali, and I'm a master's student studying photographic preservation and collections management at the University of Rochester in the George Eastman Museum in Rochester, New York. Today I'll be talking about a selection of photographs in the current installation of our History of Photography Gallery. This exhibition was organized to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the ratification of the 19th Amendment, and it demonstrates how photographs have shaped perceptions of women and feminist movements since the medium's invention in the mid-1800s. One aspect that I especially enjoyed while working on this exhibition was researching and thinking about the lives and stories of the photographers and subjects, including the 19th century British photography icon Julia Margaret Cameron. The photograph in this exhibition was taken in 1870, at the later stage of Cameron's career, using a common photographic process during that period, the albumin silver process. The title of this photograph is Angel at the Tomb. It shows a young woman in profile dressed in white with her hair loosely draped down her back and appearing as if in a dreamlike state. We know from the title that this photograph depicts a scene from Christ's resurrection, but Cameron deviates from the traditional story by choosing a female model to portray the angel Gabriel. Cameron often incorporated religion as a theme in her work. This particular scene is from a passage in the book of Matthew that reads, For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven, and came and rolled back the stone from the door, and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. This is from chapter 28, verse 2 through 3. In addition to religion, Cameron drew her subject matter from poetry and literature. In 1863, at the age of 48, Cameron received her first camera. It was a gift from her daughter. In the 11 years that followed, Cameron became internationally renowned for her unconventional approach in a field dominated by male practitioners. Cameron drew her models from her family, friends, and household staff. In contrast to Cameron's portraits of men, which were usually portrayed in the traditional portrait style, Cameron's portraits of women were portrayed within an allegorical scene. Inspired by notions of beauty from pre-Raphaelite painting, Cameron chose her female models to reflect that movement's aesthetic ideals. The woman in this photograph is Mary Ann Hillier. Hillier, a maid employed by the Cameron family, became the model for many of Cameron's works, including her Madonna series. Cameron was known for her large, closely framed portraits, which were unusual in contrast to other portrait styles employed at the time. Cameron usually posed her subjects against a dark background and showed only the sitter's head and shoulders while their bodies are draped in dark cloth. Cameron's minimal portrait style has been echoed by many photographers since. In fact, some examples of this can be seen in other works included in this exhibition, including the work by George Harrell in the 40s. During the mid-1800s, there was an intense interest in human physiognomy, using a person's facial features or expression as an indicator of a person's character. This could explain Cameron's attention to the scale and lighting in these close-up portraits, which were usually lit from the top, from one side only, and highlighted every detail of the face. Cameron wrote about her experience as a photographer, conveying the excitement she felt when she set up her first dark room in an old coal house, and reflects on specific photographs and her career. If you're interested in learning more about Cameron, I recommend reading her autobiography titled Annals of My Glass House. Jumping ahead almost 50 years, the next photograph I'm going to talk about was taken in the early 20th century, at a time which saw a large cultural shift from the previous era's ideologies and traditions. In every aspect, the definition of contemporary life was being explored. This photograph portrays a woman's leg in a silk stocking. Dorothy True, the model for the image, strikes a confident angular pose, and the black stocking and high heel create a dramatic contrast against the white backdrop. Made by American photography pioneer Alfred Stieglitz, who founded the pictorialist photography journal Camera Work in 291, a prominent photography gallery in New York. Throughout his career, Stieglitz advocated for photography's acceptance as an art form. During this period, Stieglitz was experimenting with closely framed compositions. He found that by reducing an image to its essential formal elements, he could still use a fragment of a subject to represent a larger whole. Thus, he considered this photograph to be both a portrait of Dorothy True, a friend of his wife, George O'Keefe, and the visual representation of the modern woman. This shift toward a more pared-down composition allowed Stieglitz to focus more on the intricate and dramatic plays of light and shadow, intensifying the contrast between the silk-sheathed calf and sharp high-heeled patent leather pump that characterized the start of the new era. This composition seems well suited for the platinum process used to make this print, which is known for producing an extended tonal range or registering the subtle shades of gray. 
Avant-garde photography's move from the painterly characteristics of pictorialism to the abstract forms of modernism coincided with the equally radical transformations in women's fashion, such as shorter hemlines and the bob hairstyle. Stieglitz made this photograph after World War I, when suffrage was about to be granted to women in the United States. He hoped the print might serve as a commentary on the era. As you might have already noticed, there are several aesthetic and conceptual similarities between the photographs I chose to discuss today, including an astute attention to lighting, more minimal compositions, and the theme of representation. This next image is no exception. Photographed by George Harrell, this work is titled Catherine Hepburn. Harrell's name is synonymous with Hollywood glamour portraits from the 1930s and 40s. His distinctive style, achieved through dramatic lighting techniques and close framing, make his subjects appear alluring. This approach seems especially well suited to capturing the indomitable persona of American movie star Katherine Hepburn, described upon her death as the patron saint of the independent American female. Hepburn was a feminist icon throughout her career. Advocating for women's rights on and off the screen, Hepburn fought for equal pay in the entertainment industry and fiercely challenged gender stereotypes. Harrell's photographs, in addition to revolutionizing the style of celebrity portraiture, were seen as establishing many actors' and actresses' careers. Some scholars trace a celebrity portrait turned icon to Harrell's work. Before pursuing photography, Harrell studied painting, which probably influenced his attention to lighting. Harrell's emphasis on dramatically lit, closely framed faces, the skin appearing almost luminous, are characteristics still associated with today's headshot. Although Harrell photographed many celebrities throughout his career, he admitted that he had never seen anyone quite like Katherine Hepburn before. I didn't know this until I began my research for this exhibition, but Hepburn's mother, Katherine Houghton Hepburn, was a committed suffragist. In addition to women's right to vote, she advocated for access to birth control and better working conditions for women. Growing up in a family with a strong tradition of advocacy, many of Hepburn's films contain themes of feminism, from choosing her career over marriage to insisting on wearing pants in a time when most women were expected to wear skirts and high heels, Hepburn questioned the traditional notions of femininity. In contrast to the celebrity portrait, Marion Fowler's series, Hey Baby, Take My Picture, draws attention to an experience as familiar to women today as it was almost 50 years ago, being catcalled while moving through an urban environment. Walking New York City streets with her camera, Fowler photographed every man who asked her to take his picture. Fowler later wrote, only men and boys have asked, never women. I'm told, though, that young women often ask men to photograph them. I suppose the request is directed in part at me as a woman and in part at my camera. A desire to make contact and a need to be photographed. This project encompasses themes seen throughout Fowler's work, such as the importance of working with series or multiple photographs related to a single concept. After taking a photograph, Fowler would offer to make a print for her subject. Out of the 51 men photographed, only one took Fowler up on her offer. To Fowler, the camera served as a vehicle for connection, and she used its ability to explore the subtle details between people and social interactions. The artist equated having one's portrait taken as synonymous with being seen or understood by another person, and believed everyone should have this experience. These six photographs in view in this installation is from a larger series with the same title, consisting of street portraits. The George Eastman Museum acquired the complete series of this work, and only one other complete series exists in a public institution. So if you're interested in seeing more images from the series, you can find them on the museum's website. The final work I'm going to talk about is titled Stripper Pole at Peep Show San Francisco. In 1999, the photographer Lisa Carezzi began photographing two subjects concurrently, the burlesque dancers and the interiors of empty strip clubs. The resulting pictures became part of her series titled Fantasies in which she explored common cultural symbols of fantasy, desire, eroticism, glamour, and romance. Carezzi describes the places she photographed as spaces that reflect the passage of people. Here she is photographed an empty stage after hours. The worn, faded red carpet suggests the former presence of human bodies. Details such as this rarely register in the fantasies that such places invite. While working as Nan Golden's studio assistant and studying under Stephen Shore and Larry Fink, whose work is also included in this exhibition. Carezzi developed her astute formal sensibility, attention to color, and an interest in depicting the physical spaces that reflect the allure to the taboo. 
For example, Carezzi's other projects have included similar spaces such as haunted houses during operating hours and after hours. While continuing to use color photography, Carezzi has slowly moved from primarily photographing people to a focus on still lifes. Carezzi considers this image to be the strongest formal example within this series because it depicts a presence of absence within the space. In other words, that which struggles with that which should be there but isn't, and that which shouldn't be there but is still felt, seen, or heard. Thanks for joining me today. Please be sure to check out the other series by my colleagues who discuss the installation further, and I hope you enjoyed the exhibition.